Hello, Elijah. Welcome to lesson number two. I loved getting to hear the music you sent to me. That was great. Really good things going on. It was beautiful to hear. Um, things are sounding so nice. Loved to hear Nocturne. It all finished up and just it's, it was beautiful. And I'm thrilled to hear how Moonlight Sonata is coming along as well. And of course, I just love Darcy's letter. So how can you not, right? So that is great. Thank you for letting me hear. It definitely helps as I prepare your lesson. Um, gives me an idea of what things to focus on a little bit, okay? So let me say a little hello before the rest of the time. I'm just, you know, on the keys. Anyhow, we're going to start today with a dozen a day, and then we'll do your scales next. What I'm going to have you do this week is go on to number seven, which is also on page six. So hopefully during this past week, you did that review of number one through number six several times. It's a great thing to still do during this week, but our focus again will be on number seven, okay? So let's just take a quick look at the rhythm here as we have number seven. We've got eighth note and then sixteenths eighth note and sixteenths and so forth. That's the rhythm that's going to continue until we get to these quarter notes and finally ending on a half note. So let's just think through that rhythm for a second. So the eighth note of course is going to get a half a count and the sixteenth notes will get a sixteenth count, right? Or a, an eighth of a count or I mean a fourth of a count. Gosh, how come I can't think? That's so funny. Fourth of a count if you want to say it that way. So again, when we're counting in sixteenths, we count one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and, uh, or however many we're counting to in the measure. In this particular measure, it's two, four time signature. So we're actually only gonna be counting to two, okay? So we'll have one E and uh, two E and uh, one E and uh, two E and. Uh. So let me get out a pen here. And very slowly, I'm just going to point to these and we're gonna see if I can make it not move. We're gonna point to these and count along. So if I do it about that tempo, it would be one E and a, two E and a, one E and a, two E and a, again, one E and a, two E and a, okay? So again, the eighth note at the beginning gets the one and an E, which is basically giving it that um, half note, that half, not half note, half count, right, that it needs. It needs two of an eighth of a sixteenth note. I'm talking kind of backwards, but I know you, you know what I'm trying to say, right? All right, so then we gotta figure out, okay, what's this high note way up here? Well, let's just, I can just tell you what it is, but I'm gonna have you think through it here with me, in case, you, unless you already know. Our top note, the note right above the line, which would be on a space, is G. And then that space above that, if we're thinking like a triad, the space above that would be a B, and the space above that would be a D. So this is the line right above that, which makes it an E, because of course E is right above D. So this is a really high E, because it's also 8VA. So it's a super high E. It's, if it were written in its normal position, it would be this E right here, but of course instead it's all the way up here at the top of the keyboard, okay? All right, now let's just observe something else before we play. We're in treble clef for our left hand until we get over to here. Then the bass clef takes over, okay? So we gotta figure out, of course, also what this note is. Are they starting on the same? Are they both E's or are they two different notes? All right, well, let's do that same thing we just did. We're gonna to go to what comes up above the, the line. What's the space above the line? It's a G. And what's the space above this next line? That's a B. Well, this is one note higher than that, it's an A. Okay, no, they don't start on the same note. So we got E up here and A right here. And again, our rhythm is ba, 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 ba. Or to start out with, we wanna go much slower one E and uh, two E and uh, one E and uh, two E and a. Uh, okay? Your fingering is listed, and that's the next thing that once you get going on this, you're gonna pay really close attention to. Because of course, with this kind of a scale, because that's what it is, it, our fingering very much matters. So notice when you're playing the right hand, when is your four crossing and when is your three crossing? You'll notice that 
Your four is going to immediately play after your five. So we're up here. And then obviously it makes sense that that's where your four is gonna be. So our three will cross there. Now our four has to cross, just like it were as if we had that pinky on it. So when we finish off with that eighth note and we go on to the sixteenths, that's when our four crosses. And then our three, we got a one and our four crosses again. Okay, so that's how that is exactly written. And that's where it goes down to. It goes from this E all the way down to this E, okay? All right, so go ahead and put your finger up on this E now, and you're gonna just play along with me. We're gonna go really slow and just make our way down to that E, okay? Ready, play. Cross over three. Now cross over four. Cross over three. Get ready for four, three, and our final four, and three, here we go. Okay, pause and play that till you get feeling really comfortable with that, okay? It's gonna take you, um, you'll, you'll play it a couple of times while you've paused it, and then of course you're gonna work on it the rest of the week, because it's gonna take some time to get comfortable. But go ahead and pause and try a couple times through. All right, now we're gonna take that left hand, and as we said, we're up on a C. So it's this C right here. We're gonna pay attention, the rhythm's the same, but let's pay attention to when are we crossing with three and when are we crossing with four, okay? It's just the same as if I were going all the way up on a C scale. I'm gonna do it the same way. I'm just gonna keep going so forth right so you know this one in other words the um the one coming down is a little bit different than what you've done before the fingering's not different notice it's the same fingering you would have had if you were doing it on c so you do know the fingering pattern it's just that you're applying it to e So it's the same fingering, so don't let that throw you. It's just a different note. But again, back to the left hand, it's not only the same fingering that we've used on a descending scale, it's the same notes, all right? So let's try that one. Here we go, and you can try with me or you can listen once. Let's just have you try with me because you've already listened once. Here we go, starting on our thumb on C, we'll go nice and slow, here we go. Cross under, of course, to our thumb. Cross under again. Thumb will always be on C when it gets there. Then here's the C that we end on. Okay? All right, so you're going to practice those hands separately a lot this week. Little by little, and probably we'll probably keep this one for a couple of weeks because I really do want to work to get it faster. It's a great exercise. Now let's take a moment though and just get familiar and comfortable, which you will do very fast, with the chords at the end for the last three measures. So the right hand ends down here with the left. Then we're just on the notice something about those chords where the first one is a C in the left hand right well the chord in the right hand is also a C chord it's an inversion of a C chord here's our regular C chord in its root position or one one position or tonic they all mean the same thing C E N G all I'm doing is throwing the C up to the top I'm playing it with my fifth finger right so that's called first inversion that's what we've got there and then left hand moves to F. We've got ourselves a regular root position or tonic or one chord, F chord. So we're in F major there. Okay, then our left hand moves up to G. And 
this little inversion right here is a 5-7 chord. It's a G 5-7 chord. Let's just talk about that momentarily. What that is, typically, here's a G chord, right? There's our regular root position G chord. Now if I were, and I think we've talked about this a little bit before, if I were going to add a seventh to that, all that means is that I'm going to add the seventh note of the scale. So let's find out what the seventh note of the scale is. Here's G, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ah, aha, the seventh note makes sense. It's right before the octave, right? So the seventh note's right before the octave. So there's our G7, or I mean, or just our regular G major chord. Here's if we added the seventh on top, and here's it simplified. It, we're playing it now in this chord that's written in this song. We're playing it without the D, and they're putting the F on the bottom. That's our seventh right next to it. So that is a simplified 5-7 chord, or G7 chord. Let me say it that way. The reason I call it 5-7 is because if I'm in um, the key of C, G is my fifth note, so that chord, G chord, is my five chord. So I naturally called it a five seven because we are in the key of C in this, and we're ending on the key of C. Back into our inversion. So there's a little theory lesson for you right there as well, okay? All right, so let's just say the names of those chords again. This is first inversion, C chord. If I'm in the key of C, then this is an, our F chord, which is also a four chord because again let me i didn't say that last time so let me just show you that one two three four right is f let me build a chord upon it that's our f chord so there's my one chord if i'm in the key of f but in this particular case it's the four chord now i'm playing that simplified g7 chord or in this case the five seven chord and then i'm back to my first inversion of c now let me just play those with the left hand They'll go slower than that depending on the speed that you're going to be playing this song at. And I do want you to progress through this song, as I mentioned, getting more quickly, which we'll do for a couple of weeks. Here it is, both hands together. And I will go at a, you know, medium type pace. Oops, I started on the wrong one up here. Oops, I forgot to have to keep going. So, um, sorry, I ended a little bit too abruptly. It will be fun if at some point we can get more. I realize that's a bit fast, but we'll kind of, we'll see what we can do. So excellent exercise. Spend a decent amount of time on this on, during the week. We're going to do scales as well, and they're similar, but I'd even rather you have this one uh, or spend more time on this than you do on your scales because it's involving scales, right? All right, that brings us to scales next. Let's do uh, the same scales that we were working on last week. C, G, D, and A, two octaves each, and you go at the speed that works for you but go straight from one to the other, okay, with those two octaves. So if there's one in particular, say it's A, maybe it's still D a bit, that you need help on, make that your main focus for the week. So don't just sit down at the piano and play C through A and say, okay, I'm done. Instead, spend a little time, work on that D scale or work on that A scale or both of them. Get them comfortable and feeling better like you know where and when to shift with your four and your three. Then when you're feeling better about them, then we will go from straight from C to G to D to A. And hopefully we can get to that point during, um, during the week, maybe you know halfway to three quarters during the week so you have several days where you can work doing it like that because I would like to add another, another key for next week, okay? So if we're doing that, let's start down here on this lower C. It's our right hand would be one lower than, um, middle C, okay? Um, I'll go through it one time briefly, um, and I will 
I'll just do it again. It, it, maybe this tempo might work for you during the week. Here we go. Ready and. or into the keys, not down here where we have to do a lot of movement. I'm not watching my keys. I was watching the camera for a second there. Um, so just think into the keys. That may have still been a little bit too fast. It's hard when I don't have you with me to remember about what speed we're at, but those two things, your scales and your dozen a day are just fabulous exercises and working. Okay, we are going to, very next, we're gonna go to talking about um, the circle of fifths a little bit, okay? So we're gonna do just a little bit more theory and mentioning, again, you've worked on now C and now the G scale and then the D scale and the A scale following. So we're following that circle of fifths like I mentioned to you. If you didn't get it printed out last week, would you do so? I did send that to your mom and it's a very good thing again to keep working on. So we've got the C, G which has the one sharp, D which has two, A which has three, and so forth. All right, and remember that at the bottom it has the order of the sharps and they always follow this order. So for a moment, let's just look at key signatures, okay? Because I'm hoping to get you to where you can, you can recognize a key signature like that. You know what key you're playing in if you are, you know, when you sit down to play a piece. Just note this one thing and we won't even begin to discuss these. Minor keys have the very same key signature, so if suddenly you start playing a song and you, it sounds like you're in a minor key, well, it won't be like C, C major, and I'm, I have to memorize my, I haven't worked with minor, remembering them for so long, I'd have to think, but I feel like it's A minor. Yeah. A minor and C major look the same, so they both like look like this, no sharps or flats, okay? Unless, anyway, I won't go on to tell more theory. There's, there's some exceptions to that because we have several different kinds of um, several different kinds of minor keys. We have what's called the natural minor, the melodic minor, the harmonic minor, and they add little different sounds. I am going to go on. I'm just going to show you quickly. There's a different one, or there's this one. Sounds a little bit more like Aladdin, and then back to the natural minor. All the changes are right up here and right before we get up to the octave note. Okay, but let us, I digress, let us go back. Here is, for now, C major, right? You're used to it, you know it, you know that well. You know if you have no sharps, sharps and flats, you're in the key of C. Okay, so let's start getting used to this one. This is G. You've played it in a lot too, but I don't know how much you paid attention to where that F sharp is. So it will always be listed up on this F, on the top line. It will never be the F down here, okay? Always it will be up here, and it will always be the upper F on the bass clef as well, okay? So that's our F sharp, and when we see it, we know, oh yeah, I'm in the key of G. G has one sharp. But as I believe I spoke to you about a week or two ago, or three or four or five or 10, I think we mentioned briefly, there's another way to tell. And that is, is that you go to the last sharp, there's only one here, so that's easy, and it's an F sharp, and you go, you raise that F sharp a half step, which would put us at G, and that's the name of the key. So if I were to look at it on the piano, I'd say, oh, okay, I've got an F sharp here. There's my F sharp. If I go a half step higher, I'm at G. Okay, great, good to know. I am in the key of G, okay? So that's another way we can learn it. But memorize, G has one sharp, F. Okay, here we go. Now we're to what came after on our circle of fifths. What did we have after G? We had C, and then G, and then we went on to learn the D scale, right? Because that was next in the circle of fifths. So that's where we're to. 
adding our second sharp, F sharp and C sharp. Notice F sharp is still in its same place in both spots. C sharp comes right down underneath it, just that particular C sharp, okay? So there is the key of D. Again, we could do that same thing. Here's our, our last sharp. It's a C sharp, raise it a half step. There's C sharp, raising it a half step would go to D. Ah, good to know, I'm in the key of D. Okay, so there's D. Let's look here now, what did we have next? It's our last one we've been working on, of course. Here's D. Okay, in our circle of fifths, A is next. So this is what the key signature for A always and forever will look like. Notice we still have that F sharp, we still have that C sharp, both in the same spots, and then we're making a little kind of a diagonal. So now we go up to this G sharp. That's our next sharp within it, is a G sharp, and we go to this higher one, okay? Let me again point out, that that, let me try and straighten it out, that is properly following the order of the sharps, right? We now have F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp, and this is their placement. And just like it says over here in our circle of fifths, A has three sharps. So there we are, that is the key of A, and you are already learning to play in it. But hopefully this little bit of theory gives you some good instruction as well. I feel like it's crucial to to master and learn, and I don't have to master it in a day or a week or a month, but working on it is good. Okay, with Beauty and the Beast, I um, I did not, uh, I could have sent it to my email and blown it up and printed that page, because your mom sent me, kindly sent me a page of it, um, but I didn't. I kind of read it off my phone, of course, which was small, and so I couldn't see it very well. Sounds like a beautiful arrangement. It's not the same one I have. So I'm just gonna let you enjoy that piece. It's so pretty. One of my favorite um, melodies written. Um, so just enjoy it. You know how to make it sound gorgeous. Take your time. You know how to make some parts louder, some parts softer. Create the best feeling you can with it, okay? But today, now, we're gonna end with Moonlight Sonata. Now this one, I did go ahead this week and sent it to my, um, email and blew it up bigger so I have it in like a picture format so I can at least you know it's a little bit small for my eye but I can see it so this will be a good great thing to enjoy and practice continue and we'll get get going again I love the way it sounded when you played it and I'm um, it sounds like you probably listened a bit to that recording that I played or and then sent to your mom it's possible, maybe you didn't. You've obviously heard the song before, it's very familiar. But what I, what I liked that I was starting to hear was that I could hear that melody starting to come out, this melody. Right, because that's the melody in the piece. And throughout the entire piece, we have a melody line that we want to continue to notice and emphasize and bring out louder. Towards the end of the piece, the melody line switches from the right hand to the left hand. So that's kind of fun too. And, and uh, shakes things up a bit for us. All right, so you are up on, you're on the second page, page 32. You just finished that first line and you're going into the next line, right? So let's just take a look what we've got right there. We are up at a D flat, F, and then A flat, and then that repeats. And then we go to the C, right? So there's that little thing. There's our melody. And then hit this note. Okay, everything else underneath that is supplemental. That's the part we want to hear the most of, okay? All right, and then our, so take a moment, go over and just practice through that with the keyboard, pause it a bit and practice that one little measure just a couple of times, okay? All right, then let's take a look at your left hand. I can't read the fingering exactly, but I'm assuming it's just one, one, five, and then naturally follow right there in the left hand right so go through that now
Now I'm assuming you've taken a little bit of time and you've practiced that right hand and got comfortable. So listen to the left, or both hands together, and then you go over and would you practice that a couple of times with pausing the video? Here we go. And of course it goes on, and I made one little mistake in the note, but could you hear the melody? Okay, let me try making, fixing that. So work on that one. Now I just noticed it actually has a little decrescendo there and not the crescendo that I created, but that's okay. All right, the next measure is simple, right? We're just going. So that one's not a challenge at all. Then we just repeat it. Oops, I keep wanting to do that. So that one is gonna be really good to just play that line over and over and over. Let me play it a little bit slower here. coming out good I hope so at least somewhat all right so add that measure uh, add that line to your next line uh, to the line above and keep working through that okay and you can spend a day just on that one little spot if you want and then add it back to the beginning all right let's go on to the second line this might be day two of practice or maybe not you'll see you'll figure that out okay so here we are in the right hand this is line three first measure again we've got the melody in the right upper finger okay practice that add it with your left because that's easy enough good and we're gonna go on um, notice here what I do you can do what you want, but I just use my one to move between those. Five, two, four. Okay, so again, five with the one moving. One, one, two, four. Okay. All right, and then finally, if that of that line, we've got the A flat. and try that one with me ready and okay let's play through that whole line and then you pause it and go play that uh, whole line just your right hand okay here it is What's our left hand doing? It just moved from this F position down to the C. Best to put your thumb on that C on the third line because you're going to be going lower from there, so you don't want to start with your fifth finger on it. So we'd have C, C, F sharp, G, C, C sharp, which you can read easily enough. All right, let me play through that line, and both hands together, and then you go, will go and work on it. Okay, all right, let's um, take a look at the next line. 
okay? Because I'm thinking, I'm not sure exactly how far you'll get this week, but we'll go through this page. And then if, if that's too much, no problem. And if it's not enough, we'll, we'll go from there as well. Okay, so you've paused the video, you've worked through that part. It's maybe taken a day or two, but here we are now. We're on the fourth line and we're with our right hand um, on the one. And I can't tell again what the fingering is. I'm just going to, let's see, we just ended off here, didn't we? The three makes sense right there. Oh, 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 I see why they're doing it. It's because your thumb's coming down here. Never mind. Yep. Now I, I can see it's a five, right? Okay, so your five is up on this D because your one is now going to play. Let's see if we can get this in focus. So right here, this little bracket and the lines that go up show this will be your right hand and then these lines that go down will be for your left hand. So at that point, right hand is playing this note and those notes and that note, okay? We'll do that later on too. It's just like we've been doing up above, it's just that it's written differently because it now has to incorporate using it with the bass clef. Okay, so we're down here. Okay, all right, go ahead and try that several times. You can go a little bit slower. I'm going a little faster than you were. We play that again now. And again, trying to make sure my melody stays um, what is being heard. And all we have to do in the left hand there is add the lower D to it. These next little sections, this starts to get fun, especially on the next page, it creates this kind of a feeling. But right here, on this is measure two, line three, you're going to be able to, oops, flat. One, two, four, one, two, four, okay? So you're, each one is gonna just shift between one, two, four, and you're gonna move your way up. Let's do that and we'll add the D's up at the top on that measure. Now on that one, I do switch it actually to a three because that helps me play the octave better. It doesn't matter which one you play it with, it just it's what I need to do for the size of my hands. Okay, and we have just the G below. So go practice that a bunch. And then let's finish up this last measure and we'll play that whole line together. Okay, we're going on to the final line of measure of line three. We're at our D octave. And this will probably naturally happen, but the fingers I use on this last little set is one, two, four, five. So F sharp in the left hand under it. Okay, let me play through that line and then you go play it as many times as you need to to feel, feel comfortable. G. Okay. All right. Like I said, we're going to go through this whole little part. We're almost done. Okay. Next line is starting out on G. I mean, excuse me, D with a G and B flat underneath, then C sharp, and then E natural. I'm going to go through this one a little bit faster than I did because of our time. Up to F. Hopefully that helps you a little bit. I know that wasn't very slow. Well, it wasn't. And um, most of my fingerings are still, you'll be able to figure out the spread. One, two, three, one. Two, three, again. Two, three. Two, three. And here, one, two, three again. They all 
L R one two three. Okay, left hand. Okay, here's what I'm going to do to end um, the last thing. I am going to just play through the whole song. Um, I don't have it expertly done. I've gone through it a couple of times, but I'm hoping it will still give you a little bit more idea of the feeling. You will hear this song played slower. You'll hear it played a little bit faster. I'm, I tend to play it slightly faster, um, for better or for worse, but I'll just play it at the speed that I that I pre that I like but not one speed is is right okay but again listen to how I'm trying to create those dynamics and that that feeling that tension as we come along so we're very soft to start and again the melody doesn't come in at the beginning but make sure these are not heavy we do not want that heaviness going on okay gentle flowing and there's four of them not three right there same with this measure. as you want as long as you can sorry obviously I don't have it perfect but it's a beautiful piece and um, 
bringing out the melody is is part of what makes all the difference, whether the melody's up higher, whether the melody's down lower. Now on this whole little section where you're going back and forth, this whole thing, there's not a melody line. This is all just, just to feel the tension. And there's a fourth sondo on this one right here means a quick and sudden loud spot that kind of backs right off. Uh, anyway, so right through there, that definitely got, it needs to ebb and flow and we're not gonna get to that part this week anyway, but it can also accelerate just a little bit, right? It's kind of nice rather than having it just be this little very rhythmic. And you also don't want it to have that punching sound, so that's more towards next week's lesson, so I'll, I'll let you go. But beautiful piece. Because you're working on this, I did not put on um, this week's lesson that was it a minuet? Yes, a minuet that I had sent to you. So just keep working on Moonlight Sonata. I wasn't sure last week where we were to with it, so hence I gave you the other piece. But you can just hang on to that for another time. Okay, thanks so much and good luck. Bye-bye.